Selectman's meeting to order. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next would be public forum, limited to five minutes per topic, discussion or comments about town employees or agency members shall be avoided so as not to violate individuals' rights. Anyone here for public forum? Next would be the minutes, and first would be the Board of Selectmen minutes for July 24th, 2018. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to accept the me minute, meeting minutes from July 24th, 2018, as presented. Second. The motion been made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 4-0. And then the next minute agenda is goals and objectives minutes for July 31st, 2018. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes from our goals and object objectives meeting from July 31st, 2018, as presented. Second. Motion been made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 4-0. Next would be agenda items. It would be number one, to sign the state primary warrant. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Um, as you were all aware, the state primary is taking place this September, on September 4th, uh, followed by the general election in November, on November 6th. So the, the state primary uh, warrant is as it has been in previous years. The same positions are up again. Uh, there are no special questions on this ballot. So, and it will be posted at the usual locations, including town hall and the, the center store. Uh, so it's customary for the board to approve it. Okay. We have a uh, discussion or a motion? No, I am uh, all set. Thank you. Um, the only thing I'd like to just mention is obviously anyone who's interested in voting this has to register. The only thing is I don't know the exact date off the top of my head. I believe it's typically three weeks before the election. So mm -hmm. if you're interested, you probably want to get to town hall and make sure you're registered to vote in advance. Thank you. I have nothing, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And I don't, I don't either. Do we have a motion? So, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to sign the state primary uh, election warrant. Second. And motion is made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 4-0. Next would be the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission reappointment slash appointment. Jim? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's that time of year again. The board makes this vote on an annual basis. So uh, the CMRPC is looking for a representative from the town of Sutton. Uh, as you know, John Hebert is the sub-east uh, regional chair of that uh, committee, uh, and he's done a lot for the town of Sutton. So I'm recommending that we, we keep John in that position. Um, the alternate uh, position, I'm recommending uh, Selectman Lamanic for that role, uh, it, a role previously held by Bruce, Bruce Davis. Uh, he's, uh, he's enjoying his retirement now, spending a lot of time down in Florida, uh, good for him. Uh, but uh, Jesse, I did talk to Jesse, he is willing to serve uh, in this role, and I think uh, I wanted to put that recommendation before the board. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, I have a question for the chairman, if I could. How long have you been on the board? For that, um, I'd probably about nine years or so, I think. So, um, you know, I, I, what we know from, from the work that you do there, it's really valuable work. It, it has impacted uh, the region and specifically the town of Sutton in very dramatic and, and tangible ways. Um, you, you told me um, that you spent your first couple of years on that board, you know, kind of sitting back, learning a lot, and, uh, and uh, you know, sort of finding your way, and I think that uh, that approach has served you well, served us well on the town. Um, and so, of course, I'm welcoming you back. I, you know, the, the, the effort that you've put in has really been appreciated. Um, and I think we also need to take the time to recognize Bruce Davis for his service to that, uh, to the town and to that board for a long time. Bruce has done it for a long time. Um, I know he really enjoyed doing that work. Um, 
And so uh, I, I guess you're right. If, if uh, Floor is a, a better option for him, then, then good for him. I think he's earned it. So uh, Jesse, I know you'll do a great job, and uh, welcome to the position. So that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Well, I'll, I'll be pretty brief. Obviously, I don't want to talk about myself, but I will speak about John, if I may. Uh, last year, I was able to attend the, uh, the appointment um, meeting in which you were renominated as chair for this book for the region and the one resounding statements that I heard from all those who are in attendance is that it's not just John thinking of Sutton it's John thinking of the whole region and then they were selectmen there from Millbury and Northbridge and and all the towns around and they all had mentioned at least one or two things specific to their communities in which John was instrumental in bringing about so um, I'm going to look forward definitely to joining you along uh, to these meetings and learning uh, from you and, and, and hopefully I will be able to as delegate, you know, come close to the service that you provided to the district. Thank you for your kind words. Wendy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to thank you for all the tangible benefits you brought to uh, Sutton and the surrounding communities. It's not been unnoted. And uh, also to Mr. Davis, thank you very much. And Jesse, you have big shoes to fill, so pay attention and take lots of notes in that notebook. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Well, I, uh, I know you, we have to vote on it, but uh, I will accept being nominated uh, for my probably uh, last term there. But I, I was just asked, it's been about nine years, and it's been rewarding because it's not only, and it's true, Jesse, it's not just Sutton. I represent 11 towns, and uh, I've done a lot for a lot of the other towns. And then to look past that, you look out to the small towns of Ware and some of those in the Brookfields where they haven't got uh, a lot of the things that we have with the interchanges of the Mass Pike and everything close by, and they really rely on this uh, money that comes in to repair their bridges, repair their roads, and uh, we do think of them as a committee. But the first couple of years, uh, and to make this shot, there is a lot to learn, but it was nice to sit back and to listen to the experts, and we certainly have some heavy hitters at some of these meetings. Uh, the Department of Transportation from Boston, his uh, undersecretary is there, and District 3, and District 3 has been really good to the town of Sutton for all that they've done. But a lot of those players have been there for many years, and they know the needs, and they know the balance that has to take place throughout the region. So um, um, I want to do it again. I want to leave on top also, but I want to invite you, Jesse, is to come along with me at a couple of meetings, and uh, I'd like to introduce you to some of the players and stuff, and uh, we'll have a good time. It would be my honor. Well, thank you. Without any more said, uh, we have a motion. Indeed. I would like to make a motion uh, to reappoint Chairman John L. Hebert as a town's delegate to CMRPC for the fiscal year 2019. Second. Motion's been made and second. Can I vote for myself, Jim? Sure, you can. Sure, you can. I don't think there's any. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 4 0. I would also like to make, an uh, make a motion to appoint Selectman Jesse Lemonick as the town's alternate delegate to the CMRPC for fiscal year 2019. Second that as well. And motion's also been made. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 4 0. Congratulations, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. And the next one would be uh, nursing IMA with the town of Millville. Jim? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you know, we are, have been considering this, and at the last meeting we signed a dual representation letter that allows Copeland and Page to represent both communities uh, through the IMA, so for that particular issue. Um, I think most of the issues that were raised in that meeting have been addressed in this, if you read through it. Uh, it is a one-year agreement. It can be severed at any time within 30 days' notice. Uh, so if something suddenly happens and it, things go awry with our staffing or whatever, uh, we can get out of it. Uh, there is no long-term commitment by it, but ideally, if things go well, we will stay for a year and then reevaluate. Uh, we can 
uh, automatically recreate it for a 25 year period of time, but you know, um, w there are natural outs of this, this contract uh, if uh, we feel we need it. Uh, other than that, uh, it's a standard IMA agreement that the board has signed the last 11 times, so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you alluded to, Jim, although last meeting was about approving the, the dual representation piece, we talked at length, I think, about the, uh, you know, the, the concept of signing this agreement and the, you know, whatever the concerns might be or, or the benefits of doing it. So I don't know that we need to spend, I don't feel like I need to spend a lot more time on it. I did have a chance to, to speak to Cheryl about it, um, who, as you might predict, expressed um, perfect willingness to uh, to accept this as part of what she's doing. I think we know Cheryl well enough to know that she might not be the, you know, the best voice on this specifically. She wouldn't necessarily tell us that she was uh, feeling overloaded. So, yeah. you know, as we talked about, it's just something to keep an eye on. Um, I don't, other than we've done a lot of these, I don't have a specific reason to think that this particular one is going to be the one that puts us over the edge. I, I don't feel that way. And, and so we've discussed, and, and you've just brought up the idea that if it turns out to be an issue, we can, we can, we can terminate it. But uh, in the meantime, I'm all for it and, and happy to uh, support it. You know, and, and there, is, there are other resources that she has. We just, um, Taylor Heck just passed her boards for licensing. That's Lisa Trost's daughter. Um, and uh, so she's available to do flu shot uh, for the flu shot clinics. And where you have the option of charging $75 per nurse per hour. So if we need two nurses to do the services, that's $150. So we have the resources. It's just I understand the, yep. the, the, the reluctancy. Jesse? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I really don't have much to say. Again, we, this is a one-year deal. Um, I'm sure your eyes will be on Cheryl as long as she feels that it's workable, then you know I'm fully in support of it. Having extra bodies that can be compensated at the expense of Millbury definitely takes the burden off of Millville. our shoulders. Millville, yep, apologize. And um, of course, it's a revenue stream. Right. So you know, a little bit of money coming in isn't a bad thing. So I think it's a win-win. But again, I definitely request that you just keep an eye on things. Andy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think we discussed it at considerable length at the last meeting, so I don't think I have anything to add. Yeah, and, and I welcome all your comments, and I'm ready for the motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the IMA between the town of Sutton and the town of Millville for public health nursing nursing services. Second. Well, a motion been made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 4-0. Next would be the town administrator's update. Jim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the, uh, the first is the town charter actually passed and was signed by the governor uh, on July 20th. Um, that is uh, better part of six years in the process uh, to get it signed and approved. Um, you know, the two biggest changes are the town administrator title now becomes town manager and the, uh, the boards now have the option of having associate members on those particular committees or boards. Um, so previously, the Conservation Commission didn't have an associate position, and we always wanted to have somebody else sitting on that board. Now they have the option of hiring, having three associate board members on that committee. So it's really up to the individual committee on how many they would like to have, um, but I encourage having putting more people on the bench to serve if, when future roles become available. You know, the, the problem is when somebody leaves, we, we only have a few people to go to. Uh, if we have people that are willing to serve in that particular role, learning about that particular position, and when a position opens, they can step right in and, and fulfill that role without a learning curve to, to deal with. So I like that, and I, I I'm glad this is over with. Uh, it's been a lot of work. Uh, Laura Caruso uh, deserves the majority of credit. She saw this through from, you know, August 2012 to August 2018. Um, and, uh, you know, she 
put together this committee with the help of the board, et cetera. So, and she was the, the secretary of the committee chaired by um, uh, David Supernot and our legislators, um, Ryan Fatman and, and Joe McKenna were instrumental in getting it finally through the legislature. So everybody deserves credit, um, but uh, finally it, it is done. Uh, and we can wait another 10, 15 years before we do another charter review. Um, digitizing cemetery records. I was approached by uh, Jim Renard, Jim Johnson, and Ross Weaver on uh, giving them, giving Ross Weaver the authority to digitize all of our cemetery records. The majority of our cemetery records are held at the old uh, barn down in, in uh, next to Pucky Huddle on Main Street there. Uh, is that a, is that um, the old fire, old fire barn? Company two. Company two down on, on uh, and, and then it was the uh, cemetery barn, and et cetera. Um, so those records are just stored down there, and, and nobody really has access, and you get, unless you get an appointment with Jim Johnson, he brings you down and, and walks you through that. This will allow all those records to be uh, uploaded on digital format for all the folks that are interested in ancestry. Um, they'll be able to go on and, and see where some of their relatives might be interred. Uh, and uh, I think it's a great benefit. Ross is doing that at, uh, this at no cost to the town. He's volunteering his services to do this. Um, and I think it's a great, uh, great effort on his part and, and a welcome uh, thing for the town of Sutton. Uh, I think it's, you know, I, I, I think it's important to have all these records available when you just pull up on a computer and, and you, you see everybody who was buried in the town of Sutton without having to wonder where they might be and wh where they might be buried. So I think it's uh, great, and uh, I appreciate uh, Ross Weaver's donation uh, of his time and skill. Blackstone River Valley Greenway Challenge. This is another uh, cycling race that comes through town. This is, again, an annual event. It's been going on for a number of years. They basically go through the really southern part of town. They come in on, uh, is it Lackey Road? And then they go out on uh, McGuire. So it's just a little corner in the southern part of town. Um, and it, it, the race goes from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. on Saturday, September 29th. So very minimal impact. Um, and the board has approved it over the past number of years. There have been no issues with this particular race. Um, so I'm, I'm just letting the board know that this is another cycling race coming through town. Uh, the special election uh, and the board meeting. Uh, Tuesday, October 2nd is the date of the special election that the board chose at the last meeting. Um, it's also a scheduled meeting night, October 2nd. Um, although the state allows us to hold a selectman's meeting that, uh, on that particular night, as long as there are no public hearings, which is what the situation that we have with this. Um, I still would prefer to move it to Monday night at 7 p.m. Uh, we'll try to make it a quick meeting. It's essentially signing the, um, the uh, a town meeting warrant that night. Uh, I will present a draft on September 11th. Is that our, our meeting in September? Uh, September 11th and kind of give you an idea of what's on that uh, on that warrant and then the board will sign that warrant on October 1st now that's a Monday night so if the board's okay with that we will we will look to do that um, Sutton residential housing needs study uh, was part of the master plan calling for this housing needs study um, Sutton, town of Sutton is working with CMRPC to access what types of housing exist with Sutton, within Sutton and identify what other types of housing are needed within our town. Uh, the process will also result in housing-related bylaws and policies. The public forum on this matter will be held Thursday, September 20th at the Senior Center from 1 to 3 p.m. and here at Town Hall on that same day uh, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. So everybody's invited to attend and it'll be interesting process. And again, fall town meeting is scheduled for Monday, October 15th at 7 p.m. in the middle school auditorium. That's all I have for updates, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for the update, Jim. Sure. A couple of questions and comments, if I could. Um, so the town charter approval is, we've done everything we need to do at this point, so now it's just in effect? It is in effect. Okay. Um, and, and our bylaw says that uh, we have a charter review process every 10 years, is that correct? That's correct. So there was some consideration during the process, and I think the first rendition of the charter was to make it every five years. Yeah. But since the process took six years to yeah. complete, we decided to scrap that and go with every 10. Seems like a good call. So, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah so, uh, I was going to say someone should be calling up Dave Serp or not because it's time to, to re up. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Not sure you would like to hear that. I would like to thank Laura and also Dave um, and Ryan and Joe as well. Dave, Dave, I mean Laura clearly has put in a lot of effort for a long time, but uh, but of course, you know Dave did a lot of great work at that time. So yeah. since we're talking about it, no harm in in uh, remembering that. Um, uh, regarding the cemetery records, so uh, like you, I would like to thank Ross for um, for volunteering his time. Do we know like what platform this is going to be hosted on and, and stored on, and does that have a cost? Um, I don't believe it does. I think it's, uh, I don't know the uh, platform. Yeah. Uh, I can get that information. Um, but it'll be stored, a lot of this information will be stored through the, um, I don't know the particular website, but Ancestry, it's not Ancestry.org, but some Ancestry website. Okay. Um, and then we will have access to it. Okay. So there, I don't believe there's any ongoing cost to maintain it. If there is, it's, it's held by that, um, uh, ancestry site. Um, so I don't see any so cost. Ancestry.com, that is a, I believe that would be a for-profit company. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. But you know, it's not Ancestry.com. Just okay. it, it, it's it's one of the Ancestry sites, yep. um, and I'll have to get that information from Ross. All right. So you know, the other thing that comes to my mind when you talk about digitizing records is that you need to create some kind of database structure so that you actually be able to find the records that you're looking for. Now, if you're using a site that's kind of all set up for this, I assume right. that's pretty straightforward. And Ross is a pretty smart guy, so I don't think he would miss that that, that kind of detail. But right thought it was worth sort of asking. But if this is a for-profit company, so the other thing that came to my mind was, based on the age of some of these records and where they're stored, getting them digitized is really important because, yeah. you know, you could have any kind of natural disaster where they're stored and you could lose these records. So They'd be gone. Um, so, so that is a, a really good process. But I would also encourage us to probably maintain those records in their current form because you just don't know what happens with you know that I'd be curious to know if they're under any obligation to archive the records themselves and save them and what happens if that company no my guess is uh, you know and I'll I'll make sure that this is the case that we will get a copy of everything that's uploaded onto a, a, a private site or a separate site um, you know as we can a, maintain as a public record yeah um, so yes so my IT guy at work tells me like if you store something with, uh, you know, Microsoft SharePoint kind of site or, or think about um, uh, Dropbox, right, that those, those are commercial entities that have no obligation to back things up and if they go out of business tomorrow, you lost whatever you have there or potentially lost that. So yeah. I just keep that in mind. Yeah, we, we, whatever is digitized, we will keep a, keep a hard record here in the town's control, probably on in Donna Wood's uh, computer. She's the secretary to the cemetery commission, and and you know keep that alive. Okay. Um, so not right. con not a concern. Yeah, just a it's a great project, and I'm glad we're doing it. Just a note of caution regarding the permanence of the records. I would say. Fair enough. And maybe this is a also an opportunity to think about other records around town that that could benefit from similar treatment. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, the road race, I'm all for. That's a good thing. I'm certainly in support of moving that meeting. Um, I'd be really interested to, to see the outcome of the study uh, and what impact that has on our bylaws. I'm you know, really right. curious to see. 
Other than that, I'm all set. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be brief. Um, Dave did an excellent job going through some of the major points. Of course, thanks to Laura and, and Ryan and Joe and, and Dave for their work on the charter. That's definitely a good thing. Um, thanks to Ross for coming up with this idea. I think that's going to be wonderful. Um, just to add on to something that Dave said a little bit, it would be nice if if residents could actually access it. Um, again, if it's going to a, a pay site or a for-profit site, one would think you would need some type of subscription to access it. And it would be nice if maybe even in the library or through town hall, kind of like they like with the assessors, yeah. you know, how you can come and look at records, you know, just so that way you could have that physical way to personally check them, at least here, as opposed to having to go on the internet. Yeah, I, I think that capability will exist. I just don't fully understand it. Yeah. Um, so I don't think the intent is to to get our records. Um, Posted on a, a private site that the town has no access to, and you got to do a subscription. That wasn't the intent. And I don't think that's what Ross intended. So I just need to get clarification on the how people can access these records. Perfect. Thank um, you. So. Um, race, I'm all for it. It's a minor impact. It's a small little push in the sun. Um, will it, will we have a detail present? I assume some of the towns will, but we're it's such a small impact on Sutton. Yeah, I don't. We have, we have for that yeah. event. We're down there. Yeah, we always get together with Northridge and everything. Okay. Because Lackey Dam Road on on a on a weekend, there's a lot of traffic on that road and everything, and just for protection. Yeah, I'll 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 make sure if, if we've had one yeah. there, and then we'll have one there this year. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, election times for the special election. We never agreed to them. Yeah, you know, with the number of candidates taking out papers, I think we're leaning to a full 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. election. Uh, so the, the thought of reducing costs on that election really came down to how many people were taking out papers. If it was a single candidate, um, we, were, we, we could consider reducing the hours. But with so many people running, uh, I think we want to keep it open all hours and uh, give the opportunity to everybody to get the vote out whenever they can get it out. So... That's my recommendation. I wouldn't suggest limiting the hours on that. Okay, I, I, I agree with you on that. And I'm assuming it will be the three precincts, but the two typical voting locations. So the Manshock Station will be open and the school will be open for one and three. That's correct. Okay, excellent. Good. Great, that's all I have. Thank you. Wendy. Thank you. Um, I don't want to repeat everything everyone said. So uh, I do just want to say I worked really closely with Ross on the school building committee. Yeah, he's and I have no doubt in his ability to handle such a large project, and I really appreciate him stepping up to do so. Um, and ev I, you know, agree with everything that was previously commented on, and don't feel the need to reiterate it. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. And just on the cemetery uh, business alone, that's something a lot of us don't think about. But having these records down there and now having it put somewhere else, I would like to see a suggestion if we can take all those hard copies and see if we had room in the safe here up at Town Hall uh, for fire and for flood and everything else because once those are gone, they're gone. And what's so important today, uh, Jim Johnson does a, a really nice job and then he refers people to Donna Wood and then the transaction in the bank and then the deed and that gets mailed out to you and everything. Yeah. Um, it's nice to see on digital uh, where these lots are available. How many are left in old Howard? How many are new and new Howard and stuff? And right. uh, so I think this is something that uh, we haven't had done because no one really thought about it. But uh, I welcome it and I think it's, it's, it's a real asset to yeah. Because once they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. You know? And uh, Deb, just for the record, um, it's Lackey Dam Road that the race is going to be on, and not Lackey Road. And Lackey Dam at McGuire. And uh, other than that, I have nothing. I think we talked about well, whatever. Okay. And now we're going to. Do announcements, Sluckman's Roundtable. Um, no, Mr. Chairman, I'm all set. Thank you. I have a couple. 
I, I just like to send a quick shout out to Waters Farm. They had two events last weekend that I was able to attend. They had their tri summer, three some three summer dinners, Italian dinner. Um, it was well attended. It was excellent. The food was wonderful. Um, it's a nice way to spend a Saturday evening. And then the following day on Sunday, they had a tractor pull. Um, it's the first one that I was actually able to go to other than, you know, Waters Farm days, just kind of in passing. And I sat down there and I got to see some of the machines and it was really cool. So if anyone's looking for something to do, check the Waters Farm calendar. Seems like they have something going on at least once a month. Definitely fun. And this Friday, the Historical Society is having their um, annual potluck dinner at the Eight Lot School. Um, I'm told the school will be open, so if there's any one member of the community that has not yet had a chance to visit what, you know, from what they say is the oldest single surviving school, um, single building, wow. schoolhouse in the nation. So it's, it's living history, so visit, uh, go down there and take a look. It's, it's a wonderful thing. And last but not least, um, I do have a lengthy food pantry list. Uh, I talked to Michelle today, and there was a bunch of things that were missed. Um, these would be quick bread mix, crackers, mustard, cake mix, paper towels, canned potatoes, white rice, brown rice, beef stew, razors, men and women's, shampoo, dish soap, women's deodorant, and laundry detergent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just two quick things. Um, first, on August 30th at 6 p.m. on the Common, uh, Rain or Shine, the Sutton Cultural Council will be presenting Forever Fab, which is a Beatles tribute band. Uh, the songs will be selected by request from the audience. So phone up on your Beatles songs and find out what you'd like. It's family friendly, so bring your blankets and your picnics. I think it'll be absolutely lovely. Um, it will be not just music, but also some cultural and historical background will be presented on the Beatles. Uh, so I encourage everyone to attend. And along that vein, the Sutton Cultural uh, Council is also looking for some new members. Um, and their press release, as it were, uh, is that the goal of the Sutton Cultural Council is to provide cultural opportunities and events that benefit the diverse audiences of Sutton, including children, families, and seniors. Each year, the Sutton Cultural Council has been able to fund events for the library, the senior center, and outdoor event, uh, events and concerts such as the Beatles. The council is currently seeking a welcome, welcoming new members. Please contact co-chair, co-chairs Paige Thayer or Pam Nichols for additional information. Uh, so, you know, perhaps attending the show on the 30th give someone some inspiration to step up and help out Paige and Pam. They do a phenomenal job. What time is that? Uh, six o'clock. And that's rain or shine. Uh, if the weather is inclement, the event will be moved into the church. So I'd like to thank them for right. once again stepping up and providing some rain shelter. Hopefully it's not a day like this past Saturday. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you. Jesse, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, the one more thing popped in my mind, um, and this is going to happen before our next meeting, so I figured I'd just mention it. Believe it or not, summer vacation is almost over, and before we meet again, BVT will start up. Um, the freshmen start up a week from Friday, so there will be buses going through town, and then the following Monday, it's their first day of regular school. So, you know, when that happens, just be mindful in the morning. There'll be some kids, you know, standing around the corners, and buses going through town, so just you know, slow it down a little bit. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, tell me about it. And do we have anything under correspondence or business topics? Are we kind of covered it? I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. All set. Thank you. All right. set, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And I'm all set too. And adjournment. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Four zero. Aye.